Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Kelsey. How's it going? Going great. So we are here in my store. I co-own Pinkerella Games, and you have been bugging me forever to do a tour of this store, and I'm shy, so <laughs> I've been hesitant to show it off, but, um, but here we are today. So I'm gonna give you guys a look around if you're ever interested. We're located in Seattle, Washington, so if you're here, come on by. All right, let's take a look. Welcome to the store. This is Pink Gorilla Games in the University District. Uh, this is one of our two locations. And right as soon as you walk in, you are greeted by this beautiful statue of Fox McCloud here. Uh, he's kind of, he's seen better days. He was actually stolen once, so now he's chained to the wall, but that's okay. Uh, we also have these Gachapon machines, which I really like. Um, you get a random Pokemon figurine out of them, so people seem to really like those. I wish we had more. <laughs> um, we've got tons and tons of plushies in the store. We get all of these from Japan, so they're really nice, high quality ones you wouldn't really see anywhere else. Up on the wall here, we've got tons of empty boxes for systems. Um, I actually have plenty more than this, but we like to have one of most every system out for display just to give people kind of an idea of what it is we sell here. So we not only have American consoles here, but we also have some import ones too. So back here we've got like a Japanese Wii, um, and then this is probably the coolest thing in the whole case right now. This is the I made this edition of the Xbox One. So this was given to like the people who worked on the Xbox One when it was coming out. Uh, launch team 2013, it's a pretty neat little piece of history. So we don't always have a really cool Turbo Graphics and PC Engine section because, well, I mean, it's not a very common console, but right now I am happy to report that we have some really cool and very, very expensive games in here. So over here we've got our Wii games, we've got our very small section of Switch games because they haven't really been traded in a whole lot yet, uh, GameCube games, and then a bunch of strategy guides, which I really like that we carry. Not everyone still uses or likes strategy guides, especially since you can find all of this information on the internet. But I really like strategy guides because, I mean, it's got cool art in it and it usually has nice screenshots that tell you like exactly where to go. Um, so a lot of people do like collecting these still. So almost exactly when you walk in, you will see this awesome rare case. This is where we keep all of our handheld consoles as well as all of our pretty rare stuff. So right now we've got some selections of handhelds here. We've got a bunch of really rare NES games, including some ones that don't look like they really have any business being rare, like Wayne's World, why is that worth so much money? Some box games in here, N64, Super Nintendo. There's even some games that are rare enough to be in the case even without their original artwork, like Project Justice in here. We've got some pretty cool box Game Boy Advance games as well, which is hard to come by, as well as some Nintendo 64 disk drive games. Now that's pretty uncommon. Uh, we unfortunately already sold the disk drive, but we do still have some games remaining. So over here is kind of our super old school wall. This is where the Atari and the Intellivision and the ColecoVision and all of that fun stuff, even the Odyssey live over here. Um, these are not exactly our hot sellers, but I still like having a wall of them because you get people in here who remember the Atari fondly. I mean, people like Metal Jesus who love the Atari. Um, so I like having a big wall of it, even if it's not a hot seller, just because it's, uh, it's interesting for a lot of people to see. So this is where we start seeing a lot of the import stuff. That's one of the things that we're really big on here is keeping a lot of games that are imported from Japan. So this is our Famicom wall. It's actually smaller than it normally is. We usually have a couple hundred more games than this, but we actually got so many NES games in recently that we had to kind of cut it down. So next to that very colorful wall is our enormous NES section. I'm very proud of this. We got an almost complete collection traded in a couple months ago. Uh, been picked over quite a bit since then, but um, we still have plenty to make this awesome wall full of, I mean, hundreds of NES games. Next to that is Super Nintendo, always an awesome section, always a popular section. And next to that is the Super Famicom, which is an even larger section, I think. It's got one more row on it than the Super Nintendo section does. So this is part of our, imports are a big part of our business. You can really tell with, uh, with walls like these that are just full of Japanese games. 
So one of the reasons that we do imports and do so many imports is because our store kind of at its core is very Japan inspired. I mean, the colorful walls, the mascot, all of that is very uh, reminiscent of Akihabara and all the game stores in Akihabara. So we want to bring not just the feel of that back to Seattle, but also plenty of the games and the culture as well. Um, it's definitely kind of a challenge to educate people, um, especially with like Super Nintendo. It's very easy to play the Super Famicom games on your Super Nintendo. So we do a whole lot of telling customers who are looking at the Super Nintendo, you know, tell them to just look to their right. We can mod your Super Nintendo for you for free. Plenty of these games will work great for you. So original Xbox and PS2, these are both enormous sections and they're not our most popular sections, but there's still a ton of amazing cheap games on it. So I really try to encourage people who are not so sure they want to get back into video games or they're just not really sure what they want. These are the two consoles I recommend all the time. There's so many amazing games on them that are like under $10. The systems themselves are pretty hardy. And I mean, just look at all of these games. There's so many to choose from compared to some of the other sections. The Nintendo 64 is one of our most popular consoles right now. Really hot, lots of people are looking for games on this. Next to that we've got Game Gear. This is definitely not our most popular console in stark contrast. Boxed Genesis games are down here in this case as well as Master System, Saturn, and Sega CD. You might notice that our Japanese Sega Saturn section is like enormously larger than our US Saturn section. Well, it was a lot more of a popular console in Japan, so it's a lot easier to get a bunch of Saturn games from Japan than it is to get anyone to give up their Saturn games here. This is where it gets crazy. We mostly do video game stuff here, but we also just kind of like to bring a little bit of the flavor of Japan in. So cute, adorable plush keychains. That's how we do it. And they're very, very popular. <laughs> We've got a huge wall of accessories. There's some accessories above every section um, in the store, but for things like GameCube controllers, especially the newer stuff, PS4, Xbox One, we keep all of the accessories for that here. Now, one of the things that we do here, you might have noticed, is that we put everything in little bags and we hang it up. And there's a really good reason for that. When stuff comes into the store, we test it, we clean it, we make sure that it works. So we wanna seal it up and make sure that it continues to work when you bring it home. So it kind of serves two purposes. The first is to do that, so it's gonna be clean when you open it back up. But the other thing is that if you try to rip one of these off the wall, it's gonna make a really loud sound and we are going to notice as opposed to just being sitting out here and you can slip it in your pocket. But for added security even more so, we do put any of the more expensive games in this case here. Anything loose that's you know harder to tie onto the wall, easier to steal goes in this case down here. We even have a small Wonder Swan section. So in this case, we've got a bunch of the Pokemon figurines. These are the same ones that are in the Gachapon machines, but if you wanna pay a couple extra dollars to make sure you get your favorite one, this is where you can do it. Uh, we carry some other little kind of gifty things. My favorite are these Monster Hunter blind box figurines. Um, that's kind of a standard way they do it in Japan is you don't know what you're gonna open. It's a very popular way to bundle their toys there. So these are cool. We import them. We try to get them here as fast as possible because we're all huge Monster Hunter fans. We've got PS4, PS3, Xbox One, and Xbox 360 on this side. Obviously people are trading that stuff in in mass right now, so most of it is pretty cheap. This is our PS1 wall, and we carry games whether or not they've got their boxes. So you'll notice that some of these are just their discs only. Um, we have two separate prices on everything, so if it doesn't have its box, it'll be a lot cheaper. And if it does have its box and it's manual, it'll be a little bit more pricey. This is where we keep all of the disc only games for all of the stuff you were seeing on the shelf. So PS2, PS3, Wii, original Xbox, Xbox 360. There's even a few disc only PS4 games up there. So these are all, you know, if you're kind of bargain hunting and you don't feel like you need to collect the games, you just want to play them. This is a way you can save quite a bit of money. So we do have a Vita section. Like most Vita sections, it's not the most impressive part of the store. But one of the things that's pretty cool about what we do is we actually carry limited run games. 
Uh, we don't mark them up or anything more than just what shipping costs on the items. We don't really make a whole lot of money off of them, but it's just kind of a cool way to provide the limited run games to people who might have missed out on them. So people in the Seattle community tend to really like that. So we do carry some card games here, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, and Pokemon. We don't do any singles, we try to keep it pretty simple, but if you are addicted to that cardboard crack, we have it. So one of the things that we're always trying to do here is make sure that no boxes get left behind. Nothing left behind. Broken consoles, broken accessories, empty boxes, manuals. I don't throw anything away. So instead it all goes into our back room, waiting for the day that we get the right disc traded in, the right cartridge traded in, or hopefully we can fix it. We do have some awesome people who can fix things here, it's just that there's always a lot to do. So we do try to make the front of the store look really cool too, to people just maybe walking by. This really cool Mario scene here was actually from a collaboration between Nintendo and Vans. Um, I traded a PS2 for it to a Vans employee <laughs> when they were taking it down. Um, we've also got these TVs that are always playing some retro games just to kind of catch your eye. The coolest thing in this window though is definitely this old Nintendo sign. Now this is Nintendo's old logo from kind of like pre-1950s, but as far as I know it was a retailer sign from kind of the Famicom era, so mid-1980s or so. I don't really know that much about it, but it's definitely a really cool piece. All right, guys, well, that's a quick look of Pink Gorilla in the University District, but you have another store as well. We do. We have a smaller store in the International District. Um, it's actually our first store, so it's smaller, but it's still awesome, still packed full of lots of games. Lots of gaming goodness. So <laughs> if you are in the Seattle area and you are a retro gamer like me, you're definitely going to want to check it out. And where can people find more information? Yeah, so you can follow us on Twitter, Pink Gorilla LLC. We actually post... When we get cool stuff traded in, yes. we post about it all the time. Uh, yes. We try to do at least a post a day of the cool stuff that comes through the store. I love that you guys do that because then I'm like, ooh, I've got to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're on Facebook, Pink Gorilla Games as well. You can find our website, pinkgorillagames.com. Our website's pretty much just merchandise, but um, if you want to support us that way, that's awesome too. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care. Kelsey was initially apprehensive about doing this video because well, she's humble and she didn't want it to come across as just an ad, but the truth is she is a huge part of the retro gaming community here in Seattle and retro collectors like me, we love her store as well as many of the other retro gaming stores in Seattle. We're fairly unique in that regard. We have like, I think 11 of them. So I wanted to do a video and highlight it. It's pretty cool. If you ever come to Seattle, definitely check it out. <laughs> cool. Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Recently, I invited Kelsey Lewin, my bud Riff from the Pixel Game Squad, and my wife to run around the Seattle area on a quest. Seven dollars. This is the real gem right here. My life flashed before my eyes there. It was great. We are going to be hitting up two of the area's most popular retro gaming stores to try and find the game with the best Metacritic score for $5 or less. I think I might have found my $5 game. It's $5.50. Dude, we've been here for four minutes. <laughs> All three of us are big video game collectors, but who will find the best game for under $5? I'm not I mean, gonna say what it is yet, because I don't wanna give it dude, away. it's been four minutes. All right, I gotta step on my game. This is a great store. This is another castle in Edmonds. And as you can see, it's a retro gaming store as well as a full arcade and also a bar back there that they may open for us, maybe, <laughs> for lucky. For lucky. This is the kind of stuff I normally like in the retro world. I've been super into like collectibles and figures and knickknacks and accessories, especially a lot of the little stuff that people think like, oh, this is a cheap little stupid thing. A lot of times I go for that stuff. I don't know why I like that stuff a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I don't even know where to start. $5 is a, is a tough thing to stay under. I found one that I like. Really? Bust a move. It's pretty simple, really? but you know, can't go wrong with bust a move. 
I think I might have found my five dollar game. It's five fifty. Dude, we've been here for four minutes. I'd have to talk them down fifty cents in order to make it qualify. So it's five dollars fifty cents. It's five dollars fifty cents. That's why you were asking about tax. So, so if I could talk them down to five bucks to four ninety nine, then I, I I'm just scared. I, it's one of those games like your your brain is like, do I like it because I like it? Yeah. But will yeah. the Metacritic score yeah. hold me enough points to I, win? I do like some bad games, and I so you know. Barbie as the Island Princess. That was eight dollars. I know I've been distracted by the PC games. I should move along. You know, Super Collapse, I know nothing about this, but it is a perfect $5. I'm not saying this in my game, I'm just saying. Oh, yeah. Puzzle games could I be like good. puzzle games are always like a safe bet. At this point, we've been walking around for about a half an hour. I don't know if any of us are any closer to actually finding our game. Well, except for, for Riff, but I don't know exactly what that is yet. But we decided to take a little break and check out the arcade, and wow, it does not disappoint. Oh, it feels like a yeah. Oh, a good old play choice. Yeah. Okay. Wow, I love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, it's a mix of pinball and arcade machines. However, it didn't take us long to find the four-player Pac-Man Battle Royale game we just had to play this. This is so much fun. Uh-oh. Hey, time! Oh, crap. So this was a nice diversion. It was very cool that they opened it up to us early. That's why you don't see anybody else here. But we are on a quest, and it's time to check out. Legacy of the Wizard for my pick is my choice. Not too many people talk about it, but it's a great NES game, a fantastic game, a cheap game. It's like an RPGs platformer digger, a lot of different things, and it is beautiful music as well. So, and I'm gonna get it down because I'm gonna do the, the discount thing. So, this is it. That's pretty smart. He's done a smart thing there. I, I'm worried. I'm worried because I'm I'm not gonna get that big of a discount. I can already tell you. I, I'm feeling this one. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling this. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good measure. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you guys are trying to hide it from each other. What is it? Don't look. I already talked Don't about look. mine. Which one is it? <gasps> this game is awesome, and the Wii version is, is awesome. amazing. Wait, but that's not under He's gonna $5. Get Discount. That's not, oh. That discount isn't going to get you under $5. Ooh. Are you just pulling little Jesus strings? Well, yes. there might be a little penalty for being slightly over. I, I don't know if this is going to be my final submission or not. We haven't decided that yeah. yet, I guess. Um, but I got Loco Roco 2 on the PSP, which is a great game. And bonus, Airheads, hey. which definitely adds like five Metacritic points, that I would add say. That should plus five. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> The day's not over. I'm going with my sleeper hit of Legacy of the Wizard. No one even knows about it. Well, no, no, no. For you. Oh, wait. Sonic Mania. I don't want to there. I'm sorry. Wow. I apologize. Yeah, no, oh, guys. <laughs> this is awesome. I don't know what this is, but this guy's belly button says booby. So I'm going for it. It's also cheap. It's apparently a skating game of some sort. I don't know. We're gonna try it out. How much? I think it's gonna be like five dollars and ten cents or twenty cents, something like that. Which qualifies for disqualification. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. This ain't the five dollar ten cent challenge. No. God. Wow, that got really close. I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my life flashed before my eyes there. It was great. Thank you guys, thank you. Have a good one. So that was store number one, and we are leaving with games in hand. But the day is not over. Oh no, we are gonna head from Edmonds down to Seattle to check out Kelsey's Pink Gorilla store in the U District. At Pink Gorilla, we have another chance to find that elusive good game for under $5. We need we need to address something here. Mm. It seems like you have an unfair advantage. No, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Because you told me, up until I met you for lunch today, that we were doing a $5 bad game challenge. I changed the rules. So, yeah, maybe I don't knows, have an advantage But she knows where to look. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe. No texting during this because you can be texting yeah. one of them. You can't look like, at your phone. Lower the can price. You, can you, you can't... lower the price of something with five dollars? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> she's she's better at keeping my business afloat than I am. 
<laughs> All right. My first thought is to check out the PSP because the games are good and usually cheap, but nothing catches my eye. So maybe the Wii? Oh, yeah. I go to the Wii because the Wii is full of games that people... Little hidden. Little yeah, they're hidden, hidden gems, good and cheap. They're, they're just cheap. like you, babe. Just like me. That's me, in a nutshell. But I'm striking out on the Wii. Nothing catches my eye, so maybe some imports? <laughs> Four dollar soccer, or football. No, they call it soccer in Japan. Do they? Yeah. Oh. Wait a well, sec. Read this. It so how does this work? <laughs> well, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> Shut up. Steve, is it called baseball in Japan? Uh, yaku. So it's called something different in Japan? Well, I guess. See? That's the, uh, the Japanese translation. So, sometimes I'm right. They're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> There's loud voices. I'm really calm. Yeah. Oh, and I'm wearing heels today because I knew I was going to be filming with you guys. I didn't want to be uh, Too short. Like walking yeah. in the box. Popping yeah. it on it. Exactly. You don't need to. Oh man, I don't know why this is so difficult. I mean, they have a ton of stuff here, but I'm just not feeling it. I mean, I'll find a good game and, you know, it's usually six bucks, seven bucks, and that's totally fine normally, but I gotta keep this under five. And then, Kelsey comes up with this. Dang it, you see that? Here's, all the Uncharted's are three bucks each. Oh, oh actually. Oh, that would be good. Yeah. Really? Hey, actually, Uncharted 2 is a fantastic game. That's... I haven't played them, so I can't. This, this is a fantastic crazy. game. I'm not lying either. Super Spike V-Ball on the NES. Really? Honestly, fantastic. Four-player volleyball game. <laughs> ah, see, you guys are cheating with your next gen. So, okay, so let's decide. Buying disc only, is this, is this cheating somehow? No, it... why would it be cheating? It, isn't the purpose of this to, like, Focus show... on the game. Yeah, well, and to show people like that there are cheap games under $5. This wall True. is like all these games, Bioshock 2, Borderlands, Brutal Legend, Call of Duty Black Ops, Modern Warfare 2, all these are under $5. They're all going to have good ratings. So yeah. this is like the wall the wall to win. You just like have to, to pick yeah, one of these and to hope. To be honest, I mean, you're absolutely right. If you, if you didn't care about the, the cases or whatever, you could buy a ton of games. Which one do you think is higher high, higher rating? Black Ops 1 or 2? I think I for, Modern Warfare. I think Black Ops 2 would be higher rated of these two, but I think Modern Warfare 2 is going to be the highest rated for sure, in my opinion. That's my favorite. I think it's sure. the most high regarded in the world of someone who has a Call of Duty clan tag tattoo. This is like what everybody, the hype is, was Modern Warfare 2. I love how so in a things. lot of conversations you have a tattoo to go along with it. I do. As the guy who's got the, uh, you know. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Skate is skate's a pretty good. Game. Yeah. Skate's probably Make up there. Make America but skate again. Unfortunately, so that's Skate a hat 3 I want is a little... Oh, yeah. I want more Skate, man. I'm calling your Modern oh. Warfare 2. <laughs> Black and Ops I'm going to raise it Black Ops 2. I like this. this I is... think that that's going to be... You know why? Because it's technically newer, and it would have a little bit more development into it. So I think the gra I think it's going to be rated higher. <sighs> Even though... I, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. This is just the normal Mega Man games, like Mega Man 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six. These are just like the NES ones, but on PlayStation. Isn't that you cool? Did that? Yeah, in Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should do the three hundred dollar pink gorilla challenge, where you have the only from this store. What Don't you're supposed to do what is you actually heck? need to get the lowest Metacritic score, so you need to spend the most amount of money on the worst games. There you and then go. You win. You win. So we can start with your back room and all the empty cases that you sell for fifty cents. Yeah. Yay. All right, we're obviously having a great time hanging out, but this is a challenge and we need a winner. So each of us has a game selected from each store that we visited today. We just need to choose which one we want to submit, which one we think has the higher Metacritic score. Right off the bat, I'm gonna go first. Okay. I wanted to choose Resident Evil 4 on the Wii, but I couldn't get it down to five bucks. Yep. So I'm, close. Ten so cents. So close. Ten I, cents I, I know, so close. So it doesn't count. And it, it sucks because this is a Metacritic score of 91. Oh, I good. think good. I would have done pretty well. So I, I, this is not qualified, but I went with what I think is another great game, and that is Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 2. Not quite as high, an 83. Okay. okay. I thought it'd be higher yeah. than that. I honestly, I honestly did. I, I thought it'd be three. That's or, not I'd bad. Be, yeah. You can go next. You're oh. that sure, huh? Wow, all right. <laughs> I, I so, feel uh, like I might clutch it. I was I was a little too overconfident in this one, in Loco Roco 2, which I picked up at the first store we were at, um, which is, it's good. Great. It's a Metacritic score of 85. Oh, all right. So you're laughing. 
It's a fun game on the PSP. It's one that I recommend yeah. pretty much everyone pick up just because it's so easy to pick up and play. Yeah, fun game. But now that I'm, you know, I was a little too confident in this one. Yeah. I, we have copies of like GTA 4 for like $4. Yeah. He pointed out. I probably should have done that. He pointed out yeah. at Grand Theft Auto 3. I yeah. mean, really, any of the Grand Theft Autos are probably yeah. going to be very highly rated, yeah. right? But that's a great answer because that is a game that kind of goes under the radar and it's super fun. This is, is a better recommendation. It is. Like, it really is. The way it the way he uses known. the bumpers is so clever. Yeah. You know, the bouncing. It's a great game. Okay, the game I was going to pick, but I didn't pick it. Was Legacy of the Wizard by Broderbund on the NES. Great game, fun game, great music, great soundtrack. Under five dollars, about is the price for it. But it's not the game I picked, and thankfully because it wasn't as high as I was thinking. It was like at a seventy. The game I did pick is uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two. Okay. Which on Metacritic, Metacritic <laughs> upon checking is at a ninety-four. Ah! Woo! Kicked our butts. Wow. Yes. I'm super. I mean, I do. You and I were going back and forth yeah, about this game, yeah, yeah. and it's like it's it's hard to say if that one's technically that much better than. than uh, the, Black any, Ops. Yeah. I mean, I the know. first five the, that, Call of Duty games all have that. They're amazing. Yeah, at the they time, are. So. Wow. All right. Congrats. <laughs> well played, thank sir. Thank thank well you. played. All right, so that's our, our game hunting. That's Where it. can people find you on the internet? Pixel Game Squad on YouTube or Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that, all that jazz. Yeah. Kelsey? I'm Kelsey Lewin. I'm youtube.com slash Kelsey Lewin or on Twitter at Kels Lewin. Awesome. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care. A huge shout out here at the end to Kelsey, Riff, and also my wife, Rebecca, for hanging out with me this day and making stupid videos. All right, guys, have a great day. Question of the week. Everyone on the internet wants to know, do you actually stand on a box on these videos? Uh, no, I'm really this tall. Thanks for watching. Metal Jesus here and I am back again with Kelsey. How's it going? It's going pretty well, how about you? I'm not doing so hot. I accidentally bought a reproduction fake game. Oh no. Well, it happens to a lot of people, even collectors, seasoned collectors. You will find these on eBay, Etsy, even in your local game store, GameStop conventions. Sometimes they don't even know it. There are a lot of red flags that you might know already, but there's a lot of smaller ones too that may not give it away so easily. I know, I'm really looking forward to this video because like I said, I've fallen victim to it. So I, I think it's gonna help a lot of people. Yeah, and today we're gonna be talking about NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and DS. Um, those are the most commonly duped things, but there's all kinds of other ones too. It would just be like a three hour video, so. <laughs> this is gonna be <laughs> awesome. So I'm looking forward to it. Let's take a look. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you being the co-owner of two retro gaming stores here in Seattle, Pink Gorilla Games, uh, you probably have to deal with this more than most people. We definitely do. There's a lot of people who come in and try to trade in games that are bootleg, fake, reproduction, anything like that. Um, they're not always necessarily trying to scam us. It could just be that they have no idea what they have, right. and I see that pretty commonly, actually. Um, so this is really good for you to know all of these things, because I mean, they could have gotten past our line of defense and ended up in the store. So you need to come prepared with two things. That. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is a tri-wing screwdriver. This is used for Game Boy Advance um, primarily, but also for some of the Nintendo consoles. And this is called a 3.8 millimeter game bit. This is used for basically everything else. NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Boy Color. Um, these are both like Nintendo tools. They mm -hmm. use these for all of their consoles and, and stuff like that. And they're like $5 a piece on eBay or so. Um, you need to bring these with you wherever you go, where you think you're gonna be buying games. Game stores, conventions, anything like that. Even if you're meeting somebody off of Craigslist, you should have them with you when you get your package from eBay and immediately look at it and make sure it is real. 
If anyone tries to tell you you can't open it because it's gonna like decrease the value or something stupid like that, don't buy it. Big red flag. Yeah, yeah. huge red flag. Even it's, in a retro store like yours. Yeah, absolutely. I okay. always let people open the games. Well, I usually do it myself for them, but. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. um, so these are tools that you need to have, and that'll be able to tell you the real meat of this, which is the circuit boards, which is the easiest tells. But you do have a first line of defense, and that's the labels and the plastic. You're typically gonna have a cheaper plastic on a reproduction or a bootleg. It's pretty hard to tell on the video, but when you feel them in your hands, if you have a legitimate one with you and you compare it to the mm -hmm. other one, they usually feel just more brittle and cheap. It's kind of hard to describe. They'll also sometimes be missing things like uh, where there's usually Nintendo engraved in it. It'll have nothing, or it says Game Boy, it'll say game or something uh, okay. like that. Sure. So there are some tells with that. You also want to make sure the label is glossy. It should be very, very clear that, I mean, all of the fonts and images and everything should be very crisp, shouldn't be any blurriness. It should have the Nintendo seal of quality on it. In the US, it's an oval, and in uh, European regions, it's a circle. Hmm. Um, I have had some people think that they have a bootleg and they really just have a European release that. because yeah. they, mm -hmm. they see, oh, hey, that's different. I've never seen this before. Yeah. yeah. So you should know that as well. Um, Fonts are a really, really big deal. It seems like nobody knows how to reproduce the correct fonts. It seems fonts. like that would be the easiest thing, right? I know, yes. <laughs> nobody knows how to do that. So you'll typically see something slightly wrong with the fonts when you're looking at uh, reproduction cartridges too. So we're gonna start with NES games, which are very commonly faked, uh, especially for really expensive titles like Little Samson and Dinosaur Peak and that kind of stuff. There's a lot of people who try to pass these off. Now, sometimes with in the case of this, they actually are nice about it and say reproduction at the bottom here. Um, but the label otherwise is actually pretty close. I mean, so, it, I, I was mentioning to you, it looks almost nicer than the original. Yeah, yeah, this one's still glossy. It's got the correct fonts, the correct artwork on it. I yeah. mean, there's no like super obvious other than where it says reproduction, which the people who are trying to scam you will not have reproductions sure. on it. Um, this one's pretty close, so I can understand if you take this one and you want to actually take it apart. And actually in this one, uh, the screws on this have uh, Phillips screwdrivers on them, so that, yeah, that's not correct. Um, so here's what a legit Metal Storm looks like, and here's what our reproduction looks like. Now, not all of them look this obvious. This right. is a pretty, like, oh, okay, those are nothing alike. <laughs> so sometimes you will have the same shape, and it'll be the same color board, but there's still a lot of ways to tell. Uh, if you see these chips right here, these are the ROM. So this right here, with this kind of bigger window with tape over it, this is called an EEPROM, uh, Erasable Program oh. Programmable Read Only yeah, Read Only Memory. Oh my <laughs> gosh, I can't say that. Um, so these are ones that you can just kind of flash any game onto, and this is what's really common in these NES games and Super Nintendo games because they're so easy and cheap to do. Hmm. Uh, if you've watched John Riggs' videos, yep. he uses these. Yep. Of course, he's not trying to scam anybody, but right. <laughs> uh, but you'll see these a lot. You'll also see sometimes like wires on the board. Oh. There's no wires on right. Nintendo games. Right. Um, and then a little bit later in this video, I'm gonna mention that there are never any glob top black solder globs on any Nintendo boards that are on yeah, really any boards. That's kind of a lie. This is Mario Duck Hunt. This one does have it, but it's only the black box Nintendo games that could have these, and they're usually pretty even right here. Yeah, nice those are very squares. nice looking. Um, you'll also be able to sort of tell a difference here in the quality of the pins. It's a little bit hard to catch on video, but Nintendo used copper because it's really uh, conductive. Oh. And usually the reproductions use tin. It's cheaper. So you can tell kind of a difference. One is a lot more shiny and coppery looking, and this one is almost silvery. Yeah, yeah, I, I you can, can tell kind the of see uh -huh. that difference there. The other thing is, um, a lot of these reproductions have what almost looks like a like they've been laser cut. Like they're very um, kind of sharp on mm -hmm. the edges here. And while circuit boards are pretty sharp in general, they'll be extra. You oh, feel yeah, the difference you're between right. that, yeah. Right. Um, so they they feel like they've been laser cut. So there's quite a few tells here. Obviously, this one, uh, they're not trying to fool anybody. I mean, this says Retro Stage 2015. I mean, these are. Yeah. This one is not trying to fool anybody. <laughs> but I mean, 
if you tore the label a little bit here and you wanted to honestly somebody, myself i that that font is so small there i right. don't know if i would actually you know pick that up i mean i assume that this whoever made this is trying to not trick people yeah you know by putting that on there initially but you never know it's it's easy to make the mistake right and the other thing you might see um if you don't see one of these eproms here with the with the windows on them this one has tape over it to kind of like so you can't it. see it as well and to right. protect it, but sometimes they won't have the tape over and it'll just be this big open circle. Um, they'll also like stack another chip on top of it so it looks legit, hmm. except it has like two levels to the board. Huh. There's never any two levels to a board. That's a that's definitely a reproduction. Wow. Yeah, so that's I mean that's most of the tells right there. Your literal best defense is just Googling Metal Storm circuit board and you'll be able to see what it should actually look like. I will warn you that there are occasionally things like um, on some of these chips, one might be manufactured in Korea and one might be manufactured in Japan. That's still okay. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they did get chips from different sources and different companies. So as long as it looks the same other than that, that's totally fine. They also have Nintendo like in this gold font here on the board of all of these, as well as like a, a not a serial number, what do you call it? Like a product number okay. on all of these. And you can always Google that too and make sure that that's correct. Of course you could fake that as well, but that's a, that's another but they often don't, huh? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to remember when you're making a reproduction, and a yeah. lot of times people miss one or two, and that's all it takes. Well, and how many people open them up? I mean, usually you've right. bought it by then, right? Oh, so. yeah. And I mean, I'll tell you right now, even I have just assumed that, and you know, years ago, but I just assumed that a store checks to make sure it's not fake, and right. so I don't bring, I didn't bring my tools with me, and I've been duped before, so hmm. it does happen. It does happen. <laughs> all right, well, let's take a look at the Super Nintendo. This is the real Earthbound. It's pretty big. This is fake Earthbound. There's a uh, there's quite a few differences here, yeah, namely totally. the size. Yeah. Um, so the other thing is a lot of these RPGs have these batteries on the board, and they're soldered onto the board. And you can kind of see on the back where they're actually like attached. Mm -hmm. This one was like a separate piece. This is like a piece you can get at Radio Shack to install a battery on right. something. And that's a pretty different process that, to my knowledge, has never been done on a cartridge. Hmm. They're always just soldered onto the board with these little uh, wings that are on them here. Hmm. Um, so that's pretty easy, I would say. Um, yeah, once then, you have it open, it is pretty easy. Right, yeah, once, you, once you've once you opened these, and that's why it's so important to have these tools. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. I need to get some of those. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's move on to Game Boy. Yes, let's do it. All right, so now we're moving on to the handhelds. Um, of all the handhelds, the Game Boy Color and the Game Boy are probably the least likely to be duped, but it still happens a lot. Um, so I think right off the bat, you should tell me all of the differences you <laughs> notice between <laughs> these two copies right here. Well, yeah, this one looks like a game I might actually want to buy. <laughs> <laughs> this one just looks distorted and weird. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of things, obviously, no one's gonna really be fooled by this. The color is wrong. Right. I mean, the label is wrong. Maybe that's not quite as obvious to everybody. Um, on all... It's missing also the, the text up here. Yeah, exactly. So there's always like engravings of some sort on Nintendo games. You should recognize what those are. Mm -hmm. um, on the Game Boy ones, they say Nintendo Game Boy up on the top here and it's engraved and nice and it's got the little PM trademark symbol mm -hmm. at the, the bottom there. So once again, the biggest tell is going to be on the inside, and for Game Boy games, it seems to be really freaking obvious. So, like I said earlier, Nintendo does not use those blob top, big black solder globs on any of their stuff, except for the like two NES games yeah. I mentioned. Um, but they basically don't use that. So anytime you see that, it's fake. That's it. You can you can call it a fake and you can walk away. Hmm. You don't have to do any more digging. Um, and that's usually pretty obvious, and they don't try to hide it. So. These ones can can be pretty easy, honestly. Um, once again, you've got that... Uh, the battery. Oh yeah, the battery on this, you can tell it's different. Yeah, much um, different. This is supposed to be the same game. Pokemon Yellow actually uses a CR1616 battery. It's a slightly smaller size than what they're using here. And it actually says that on the board. Most of the Pokemon games in the Game Boy Color uh, generation, at least red and blue, uh, use a larger battery. It's a 2025, if I remember correctly. Hmm. So this one, it'll say the battery size on there. And then this one, of course, it's in some like weird cage looking thing. Yeah. I don't know what they did with that. But like I said, it's always soldered onto the board. That's true with Super Nintendo and all of that as well. They don't ever have a weird like holder for yeah. it like in this. 
Okay, so I have a little test for you. Um, I want you to tell me which one of these Pokemon Emerald games is legit. All right, you, you want me to look like a fool here. So <laughs> <laughs> so to be fair, I never owned this. I, I had Fire Red. Okay. So, so I'm not really super familiar with this, but out of all of these, it seems like this is the obvious one that would not be correct, right? Yeah. And so. this one actually came through the store. Uh, it was a little kid who was okay. wondering why his Pokemon Emerald wouldn't work, and I felt really bad for him, <laughs> telling him that it was a fake. Okay. So you've narrowed it down. Um, oh, man. Okay, this one just looks too dull. There's something about the label that does not look legit. Also, the I mean, the color of that just looks off. It looks, it looks wrong to me. Um, these two here... These are tough. Well, this one's shaking. <laughs> <laughs> but that just means it was, you know, on the playground, right? Huh. I think this one at least looks like the nicest one. That would be my answer. And you would be correct in that this looks like the nicest one. <laughs> But it's still a fake. I tricked you. I'm sorry. Uh, These are all they're fake. all fake. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but this, <laughs> but this is certainly the closest. At least they got the fonts right on this and uh, the color of the cartridge. But it just doesn't have that metallic sheen oh, that's on all the Pokemon games. Oh, you're right. Games. All the Pokemon that. games are like metallic rather than just glossy. Right. Okay. So these all you huh. can tell as soon as you open them. They've got that black blob. Um, and I want to say something about Game Boy Advance games. This is usually my tell with how to um, immediately say, okay, this is probably real. If you look at a, a Nintendo Game Boy Advance board or, or Game Boy really, it has this Nintendo here in this font and usually has a copyright and then there's the product number right there. And you can actually see that without opening it. If you just uh, kind of look at sure. it like this. Now it's interesting because <laughs> your Doom cartridge actually had that and it's the correct font and everything. I yeah. mean, this is really, if you didn't open this and you still saw this printed on the board, it's pretty, it looks pretty legit. Um, yeah, because when I, when I first showed it to you, you're like, are you sure that's fake? Remember? Yeah, yeah. Um, and some of your subscribers pointed this out. I mean, it has a typo on the label. It says 19, or 19,993 <laughs> yeah. or something Which, like again, that. Which, again, I didn't notice when I first saw this. Yeah, it's, these are little things, and it's a little bit blurrier than normal, but they got all the fonts right. They got the stamping right. Um, on the back, the font of the Nintendo that's stamped in is a little incorrect, mm. but I mean, that's a that's a smaller, nuanced thing. So I think if you were gonna get duped by a game, at least you did okay. Yeah, and, and, what's, <laughs> and what's funny about this is it so, you know, I, I thought I did my homework. Like, I bought it from a eBay seller that had thousands of, of good reviews. And not coming from China. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and the other thing too is that when I got this home, I played it for a week before I even knew it. I mean, the game is on here, it plays like normal. I was like, I would have never have known. It was yeah. shocking to me. And But I did pay full price for this. This is not a cheap game. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of a... And if you had found it for $10, you probably, probably would have been a lot more suspicious yes, of it, I think. Yes, but it was way more than 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah. All right, so finally we're going to be talking about DS games, which are getting more and more faked every day. I see tons of these listings on eBay. Uh, so you definitely have to watch out for these because they're getting a lot better at it. So I have another test for you, okay. but this time I promise one of these is real because one of these is yours. <laughs> okay. I wonder you're like, if you, you don't can, know that. I wonder if you yeah. can pick out your own. This is Mario Kart on the DS. One of these should jump at, out at you pretty quickly, I would think. So here's the thing about this. I don't always sit there and look at the DS cartridge, right? Like, right, so you may I, not know what the... Uh, no, I mean, honestly, I... I would be tempted to pick this one, but I know it's not cause the, because the label's on Crooked. Right. Right. But I mean, I don't remember if there's Mario on it or not. That's, that's pretty funny, right? Yeah. But, so once again, this is the uh, box art rather right. than the cartridge <laughs> art that they just kind of compress. And actually, this one's right. funny because it's got the uh, uh, English seal of quality on it, and the ESRB, like English, I mean, American uh, Nintendo seal of quality, and the ESRB, which of course is American, but right. then it says EUR on the bottom. Oh. European. Yeah. That's funny. They didn't even think that one through. All right, so for this, <laughs> these ones that are left, oh my Your God. Your hint is check the back, too. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Let me know if you give up. Uh, okay, well, geez. <laughs> I'm going to give up. Okay, so <laughs> what's funny about this is actually one of these fake ones is mine. Um, it was something I must have just bought from an expo or something, and I didn't think to really check oh. carefully because it's a cheap game. Who cares? Right, yeah. So I never thought about it. Um, 
So one of these incorrect ones is mine, and it's very, very close. Uh, this one is mine. You can see the Nintendo logos on these have just a slightly different font. Here's the real one. You see the font oh difference in these? I know it's so intricate and so hard to tell. So that's huh. why these are really, these ones are getting a lot harder. And there's nothing to open up. I mean, there's nothing to, I mean, you can pry you, these open, but you'll have to glue them back together. Yeah. They don't have a nice little wow. screw like the other ones did. So you, you just want to look at all of the engravings on these. With the real one, you'll see the slight difference in font where it says NTR005 and patent pending. Again, these are these are small things, so it's important to have a reference of some sort. And that's why eBay listings are so dangerous because the lighting could just be bad. Absolutely, or the camera is funky. Right. Yeah. I also have Pokemon Platinum here. And your biggest giveaway here is just the label is darker on this one. Again, I will caution you, if you are buying a game or a lot of three games especially, I see Pokemon Platinum, Mario Kart, Pokemon Soul Silver, Pokemon Heart Gold, uh, White, Black, all of the, like especially Pokemon and Mario games, super, super commonly faked ones. If you're buying something wow. and it's too good to be true, it is, it is <laughs> fake, even if it looks really legitimate from the listing. Well, this has been an eye-opener for me. I actually thought it'd be way <laughs> easier to tell, and this is really cool. Not when you get to DS, unfortunately. <laughs> I know. Sometimes you'll see pretty obvious ones, like on the back of some of these, it'll say like Nintendo instead of Nintendo. Yeah, you have an example of that. Yeah. That's so funny. And <laughs> it, yeah, and actually one uh, made it through one of my employees that says Nintendo on the back, and I was like, really? <laughs> um, but it's fine. So yeah. there's a lot of different ways you can tell, but some of them are pretty difficult. So of course, bringing these will help you with everything except DS, and then for DS, have a reference with you. That's yeah. my biggest piece of advice. Just pick up a dollar game at GameStop, you know, style savvy or something like that, Guitar Hero, right. and and bring that around with you and make sure the fonts match because that's really gonna be your biggest defense on that one. That makes sense. So this is obviously very Nintendo specific. Yes. Uh, and so we didn't really even touch on like Sega or you know any of that stuff. And that stuff gets faked too, especially like Saturn and Dreamcast and Turbo Graphics and stuff. I mean, those things definitely do get faked, but by and large, I would say Nintendo's and especially mm -hmm. Nintendo handheld huh. consoles are the most faked and bootlegged reproduction, that wow. kind of stuff. Well, let us know down in the comments what you thought about this video and if you would like us to do another one of these where we do focus on some of the other systems because we could certainly do that. I think that'd be pretty interesting. I might need someone to send me some fake games because <laughs> I, I don't have a whole lot of them for those other systems. They don't come into your store very often. Not, no, not as often because they're, for the CD ones, I mean, it's like, it's pretty obvious when it's a reproduction yes. label. So I haven't really seen very many convincing fakes. Huh. Interesting. Well, cool. Well, where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Kels Lewin, or you can follow my podcast at Game Blitz Show. We're also on iTunes and YouTube and Google Play and all that fun stuff. That's right. And also, I'm going to do a shout out to your store, PinkGorillaGames.com. Thanks. So if you come to Seattle, definitely go to their store. Bring your tools. You can open up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks very much for watching this video. Thanks for subscribing to my channel and take care. Why aren't you on the box? Is that better? Perfect. Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with a highlights video of my recent trip from Seattle to Los Angeles for the big video game conference called E3. Now, a lot of these videos that you see primarily focus on the games themselves, and we're certainly going to do that, but this is really more of kind of behind the scenes look of what it's like to actually go to one of these expos. And we're gonna start with meeting Kelsey at the airport. So our E3 plan is screaming babies. We're here at the Seattle Tacoma Airport. We are flying to LA. We're gonna go get a really fancy Airbnb. We're gonna check out E3 uh, until Thursday. And we're so we're there for what, four days? Yeah, let's do this. Now, technically E3 is only Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but we're flying down Sunday 
to kind of get a jump on things because that's when all of the press conferences happen. And if you go down as media or journalists as we are, you can sometimes get into those press conferences. Actually, Kelsey is going to get into uh, Bethesda a little bit later. But for right now, we've landed and we're heading towards our awesome Airbnb that Kelsey got set up. The amazing thing about this is that it was actually cheaper than a hotel that would be near the convention center. So here's the Airbnb we got. It's uh, pretty incredible. We've got a room in here. You gotta see the kitchen too. I mean, I guess it's technically all kind of one thing, but like, this is awesome. I know, it's awesome. It's way better than any hotel. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's all the buildings. We're a little bit far from where uh, E3 is being held, but not, I mean. Not you know, too far. 10 minutes away of that, so. Two bedrooms. Two bedrooms. Two baths. So I'm in there, and uh, yeah. Yay. Yeah, we got this crazy view. I'm sure it's gonna look awesome at night, too. Yes. So we picked up our badges, and now we are here in Little Tokyo, which is one of my favorite parts of LA. There's not really a lot to do in downtown LA, but Little Tokyo is kind of the exception. Lots of Japanese stores, obviously, uh, but we're looking for an import game store right now, so hopefully it's pretty cool. At this point, you'll notice that Kelsey's boyfriend, Cody, has joined us. Now, Cody is also the co-owner of Pink Gorilla Games, her store in Seattle, Washington. At this point, we have a couple free hours, and so we wanted to go check out a kick-ass retro gaming store in Little Tokyo, and this place did not disappoint. It was all Japanese imports for pretty much every system you could think of, and it was very impressive. It was really cool. It was actually busier than I expected it to be, you know, especially for an import store. But, oh man, we were just going crazy in here. I mean, the thing I love about this is that, you know, sometimes games in North America can be kind of expensive, especially retro games, but you find that the Japanese version of it can actually be sometimes cheaper, which is pretty cool. Well, I got some awesome stuff. Probably uh, probably more than I needed to buy, but that's okay. I don't even have room for this in my luggage. That store is awesome, right? It's so cool. And they've got a sister store, or a couple sister stores in Japan. So this is like a real, you know, a Japanese chain. Um, I picked up Super Tetris plus, plus Bombless on the Super Famicom. I got a lot of red things today. Uh, I got Twin B on the Game Boy Advance. That is so cool. Yeah, which I love. I love this. Their classic boxes here. It's like a uh, Famicom box, like a tiny Famicom box in a larger plastic box. I picked up a copy of Donkey Kong on the Famicom, which I already own. But there's a certain someone here at E3 that I'm going to attempt to get to autograph it. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm going to try. I'll let you guess who that is. And then I picked up a game for my Wonder Woman collection, of course. They only had four games, so I was a little sad about that, but awesome. it's okay. Better than nothing. Cody, what are you doing? I'm loving these Sony announcements. <laughs> All right, today is the first day that the hall is open, the expo hall is open. So we just got finished watching the Nintendo Direct. Uh, today, we're going to go see some cool games. Uh, we've got an appointment at the Bandai Namco booth, so we'll probably check out the Tales of Vesperia remaster, probably Code Vein, uh, and that new Jump Force game. I don't know what else they're gonna have there, but it's gonna be a fun day. We made it! We made it! Yay. Well, inside, not the hall yet, but yes. inside the building. So we're close. With, we're almost there. So here is the first day of E3, and I don't care how many times you go, it's always so exciting, that first opening bell. It's it's amazing. Now, what was really funny about this though, is that not even five minutes after we got there, IGN found Kelsey and started interviewing her and actually Cody on what they thought about some of the announcements that have happened uh, previously from Sony and Nintendo and stuff like that. So that was a total surprise. I actually couldn't find them. I was like, where are they? <laughs> uh, they're total rock stars. Hey guys, the first place I had to hit up is the Bethesda booth because they have awesome merch including this limited edition t-shirt. Are you ready to rage here at E3? Join us right here at Rage 2 where you can see the experience, try the game, enjoy the ice cream, shoot mutants in the face, blow shit up, only at E3, only right here at Rage 2. I'll see ya here. <laughs> 
So like I mentioned previously, one of the things I like to do when I first get to expos like this is just run over to some of my favorite booths just to see if they've got some cool merch. And thankfully Bethesda had some cool t-shirts. Actually, they had a lot of stuff. So basically we're just trying to do kind of an orientation walk at this point. So we're walking by and now we are inside the Sony booth somehow. I don't know how that happened. They recognized they me. They just saw you and were like, come on in, you're scanned in now. So here we are. Yay. Uh, let's try and play some Spider-Man real quick. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the media slash VIP area where you have to basically have an appointment to get into, but the guy at the door saw me, was a big fan of my channel and let us in and we actually got to play Spider-Man. It did not disappoint. Wasn't that guy's makeup just absolutely amazing? There was an entire team of zombies all throughout the expo that were very, very impressive. So this is a bunch of just random shots of the floor, including, look at there, there's there's Brittany. There's Brittany, she's been on my channel a couple times. And also here is the Microsoft booth. This is the Forza booth here. They always have like an amazing super hyper car there. And I'm a sucker for that. So here's a McLaren. A pretty cool thing that Cody does is that he streams on Twitch. Notice that camera on his shoulder there. Well, that backpack is full of batteries and also cell technology so that he can do it all the time for hours at a time. He actually walked around for eight or nine hours that day. It was very impressive. One of my favorite booths of any expo is always Hyperkin because they have the coolest stuff and this year was no exception. Look at these colored Xbox One Duke controllers. I want every single one of those colors, so cool. They also had a fully licensed Mega Man retro styled wired controller for the Xbox One and PC. Pretty nice looking. And then check this out. This is a complete reimagining of the original Game Boy, Game Boy Color called the Ultra Boy, carved out of aluminum. So could be cool. But the highlight of their booth has to be the fully functional and retail ready version of the Retron 77. This is the brand new Atari 2600 clone system and they actually gave me one to take home. So I will be doing a review on that very soon for my channel. And then not far from there, you have the booth for the National Video Game Museum. And this was a nice surprise. I mean, when I think of E3, it's usually all the latest and greatest, you know, games that are coming out. It was really cool to see this booth full of just old retro stuff. It was very cool. And then I ran into these hip hop stormtroopers, which might just be the coolest thing ever. Tomorrow we're going to Nintendo. Yes. And I'm gonna get to meet someone very special. Yes. Um, and I might ask him to marry me. <laughs> Either of them. Either? There's a, yeah, there's, I mean, Shigeru Miyamoto's gonna be there. But so is Hisashi Nogami. And if any of your viewers are, are familiar with Animal Crossing. It's a big day. It's a it's big a, day. It might be my wedding day. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> So at this point, we're winding down from a very long, very fun day. We may have hit up a party or two and had something to drink. Today is day two of the show floor and it is a packed one for me. I don't know if you're gonna go with me this whole time, but it's gonna be pretty crazy. My first one is at Bethesda, which is gonna be awesome. I don't think I'm gonna get to play any Fallout 76, unfortunately, but we'll see what they do let me get to play. We've got Nintendo at 12.45, which will be pretty exciting. We've got a Bionic Arcade, which is like a little mini arcade cabinet thing. It's kind of, E3's got a lot of little things like that. It's not just the big AAA titles and the big, you know, releases and stuff. There's also a bunch of accessory companies and peripherals and, you know, new gadgets and, and that sort of thing. So we're going to check some of those out too. I've got Gearbox and I've got Techland and we've got some parties tonight. It's going to be a really, really packed day and it's going to be a good time. All right, the second full day of E3 and we are off and running to our appointment with Bethesda. And the game that they showed us and put in our hands is the mobile version of Elder Scrolls. This is called Blades. And I have to say, 
this this game was surprisingly fun. I mean, it feels like a full-blown Elder Scrolls game. Kelsey and Cody are huge fans of Overwatch, and the booth here was so cool because there's this rotating platform that you stand on, grab some weapons, and then there's a green screen behind you, and then you can act out whatever character you want, and then they superimpose or replace the green screen behind you, and it, it just looks so cool. This is a very neat booth. Being a video production nerd, I always appreciate getting a behind the scenes look at IGN here and how the, you know, quote unquote pros do it. And now it is time for our appointment with Nintendo. We have to give a huge shout out to our friend Jonathan who works there that got us in. And as you guys remember, oh man, Kelsey was so excited to finally meet one of her gaming heroes. And this is the co-producer of Animal Crossing as well as Splatoon. Look at those smiles. He actually took the time to take a pen and draw on her box art right there. That's a character that he created for the game called Bob. She was so thrilled. This was a very cool moment for her and I was so glad that we were able to capture that. But that's not it. They also led us into the area where they had some games set up for VIP people. And we got to play a couple games, including the new Smash Brothers. That was pretty awesome, although I'm not very good at it. So I handed the controller over to my buddy Jonathan who at least was able to keep up with Kelsey because she's way better than both of us. I also got to check out and play some Overcooked 2 on Switch with Jonathan, which was cool. And then Kelsey actually got to check out the new Pokemon on Switch, but sadly Nintendo would not allow us to record any footage because it's not yet ready for the public. Immediately after that, we bumped into Adam Korlick, who was helping out the Sega booth and walking around with some of the voice actors from Shenmue and this was so funny because basically the voice actor would stay in character and ask questions from the game like, you know, do you know where I can find any sailors? But it's completely out of context and he wouldn't break character. And I actually got to participate in this a little bit where I tried to mess with them. It was so much fun to do. I can't wait to see the footage. It's getting to be nighttime and let's go find some gamer parties and the one I've heard the most about is the Devolver Digital Party, and this did not disappoint. These guys, these guys know how to party. I mean, this was right across the street from the convention center, and they had live bands, they had VR set up, they had movies displayed on the walls, uh, free drinks, they went all out. I mean, again, these guys really know how to impress people, to throw a party, and uh, I can't say enough good things about it. We had a great time. Day three of E3, and we are off and running early in the morning, but definitely a little bit low on energy. I looked in the back seat and Kelsey was grumpy, and uh, I totally understand because, you know, it looks like fun, but you are just going 100 miles an hour all week long. As a matter of fact, I looked at my phone and look at this, how many steps I, I took. It was like 20,000, 14,000, 13,000. I mean, it may not sound like a lot, but it's definitely intense when you're there. And also factor in, again, we are in meetings and you know, shaking hands and stopping and talking with people and stuff. I mean, it's cool, but it definitely uh, can wear you out after a little while. So for this last day, I had booked our final appointment at 10 a.m. with CD Projekt Red because they're going to be showing off Cyberpunk 2077, which I was very excited for. But it definitely put a little bit of a crunch on us because we had to turn in the keys for the Airbnb and also pack up all of our stuff to get to the last day here because we had to leave at about three or four in the afternoon, which was definitely cutting a little bit close. But we got one final walk around the expo, which was pretty cool. Then hop into a shuttle bus and try to haul ass to the airport and try to make our flight. All right, guys, we are at the airport. We are tired, we are hungry, we are exhausted. We had a great time at E3. Yeah, we had an awesome time. So I gotta know, what was the highlight for you of the show? Well, I got to play a lot of really awesome games, but my highlight was probably getting to meet the co-creator of Animal Crossing, Sashi Nogami, at the Nintendo booth. You were so excited. I was 
crying a little bit. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. having to fan my face yeah, so I didn't yep, faint. It was, it was pretty awesome. But the games were great, too. That's just a pretty unique experience. Yeah. For me, it definitely have to be, and I think you'll also agree, that Cyberpunk 2077 blew us away. Oh my gosh. It blew we us away. We didn't even get to play it. Yeah. It's not anywhere near ready to be played, but it was still the most incredible world full yeah. of just stuff. I mean, it was the most alive world I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, they basically played it for an hour, so we got to see an hour of it, you know, with the developer, with the, the QA department there. It was incredible. So cool. Yeah. So we got to ask our camera person, though, Cody, what, you know, what was the highlight for you? I think the best part of E3 easily was Devolver. Every part of it. It was the best presentation, they had some of the most interesting looking games, my friend Pedro, and they had the best booth. Free beer, free food, and Metal Jesus and I got into a intense Jenga battle that drew a whole crowd. It was amazing. So, Devolver all the way. So, for you guys that were following along with E3, whether you were there or just watching online, what were the highlights for you? Let us know down in the comments. Yes, and we... Like I said, we're exhausted, but we can't wait to do it again. It's, I mean, next year, I'll, I'll probably prepare a little bit better. That's my only little regret, but thankfully you had me covered there. <laughs> so where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on my YouTube channel or my Twitch channel. Both are just uh, youtube.com slash Kelsey Lewin, twitch.tv slash Kelsey Lewin. I'm also on Twitter at Kelsey Lewin. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care. What made the expo even more memorable was you guys. You guys coming up to me, shaking my hand, and telling me how much you love my videos, the content, the Metal Jesus crew, and all the stuff that we do. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I honestly, I didn't really expect that many people to recognize me, not just at the expo, but on the street, in restaurants. It was very humbling. It was very, very cool. Also, again, a huge shout out to Kelsey, who not only really made this trip possible, she's actually the one that booked the hotel and basically offered you know a place for me to stay, but she also saved my ass many times when I got distracted and would have left my wallet in a bar. So thank you so much, Kelsey. Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am currently on my way to Pink Gorilla Games in the U District, and I wanna meet up with Kelsey and a guy named Tim who reached out to me the other day because he has found something pretty cool. A couple days ago on late Wednesday evening, I get a random message from a guy named Tim who lives in the Seattle Puget Sound area. And out of the blue, I don't know him, he messaged me and he's like, hey, are you available to chat? And then he includes this photograph. And then it says, you know, he's going through his brother's stuff, his parents want him to sell, came across this cartridge and was wondering, you know, if I knew where he could get it graded or who to talk to about it. Now, I was hanging out with my wife at that time and I didn't have my phone with me, so I didn't actually see it to the next day. And when I did, my first thought was, well, he's probably trolling me because people do that sometimes. And I kind of ignored it for a little while. But then I got to thinking, I was like, well, you know, at the very least, maybe I should do a reverse Google image search just to see if it's already out there on the internet, you know, if this person just downloaded it and like I said, they're trolling me or if it's perhaps actually legit. And to my surprise, nothing really came up that matched it. Of course, there were other cartridges out there that are similar, but when you look closely at that, you notice that it has a serial number of 0287. And all of the photos that I saw out there did not have that. So then I started to get really excited, like, oh my gosh, this actually might be legit. This might be a, a guy who's really trying to reach out to me and find some more information about it. It was at this point that I really started to take this seriously and try to help this guy as much as I could. Now, I was getting the vibe that he really wanted to get it evaluated, talk to someone who was perhaps an expert and could help him get the most amount you know, for this. And uh, there was no other person I thought of first than Kelsey, who obviously is the co-owner of uh, Pink Gorilla, and she deals with this kind of stuff all the time. So I reached out to her and I wanted to make that sort of connection there. I wanted to introduce Tim to Kelsey. All right, I'm standing here in front of Pink Gorilla with Tim. How's yep. it going, dude? Doing good, how are you? Thanks for meeting me here. Yeah, no problem. I know this is gonna be really interesting, so let's go meet Kelsey. All right.
Kim. This is Kelsey. Hi. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. The Nintendo World Championship cartridge is a very rare competition cartridge. It was given to finalists at the Nintendo World Championships. My brother had played in the Seattle World Championships, and from my understanding, he did not become a finalist, which I'm reading online. Most of these great cartridges were given to finalists. However, a Nintendo counselor, a Nintendo, some a Nintendo official gave it to him. And I believe that he had gotten through like the first two rounds of, I think three or however it went. And it sat in a box and my parents moved around a lot. And finally it was time that my brother needed some money and it was my responsibility to start selling stuff. And that that's where we are now. It's essentially, I mean, it's not a cartridge that was ever out for sale. There's no box, there's no manual. There's nothing else you can have other than this cartridge. Um, and because it's sort of like a, you know, there weren't very many made, they, the labels aren't very high quality, there's all these kind of other weird tells, you know, the cutout with the little switches on it. It doesn't so cool. look like a normal NES cartridge. So the, the biggest thing, like right away, is, uh, you know, the quality of the label which looks reasonable condition for something this old and that's been sitting in wait, several attics, right? <laughs> yeah, several <laughs> um, storage units. And this, uh, this switch cutout looks right. And I'll actually, um, I can pull up the, a photo of the PCB um, so you can kind of see the comparison as I'm, as I'm doing it here. Um, we are gonna go ahead and open this. This is something that, um, to be perfectly honest, is is probably pretty difficult to fake. You can see how enormous this board is, right? So, um, you know, not not an easy thing to to get all of that. There are several replicas out there. Um, I've personally, I've never seen any trying to pass themselves off as legit. Good. Yeah. So you can see that pretty much, it's pretty obvious here, you know, all of the, um, you've got this gold NES event engraving up here. You have all of the, in fact, all the chips look identical. Sometimes on other rare NES games, you'll have you know, chips that look very, very similar, um, but are a different corporation, um, different, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> right. rather than being a Sony chip, it's a Toshiba like a chip different or whatever, almost. right? Yeah, yeah, but but the same chip, but, um, but these are even, you know, I haven't opened up enough NES World Championships, as you can imagine, <laughs> to know if there are any differences in the chips. There probably aren't, though, just because of the low print run. But yeah, as you can see, this one is number 287. This is a new number. This is one that has not been in the hands of any collector yet. Um, so that's kind of exciting. This one's not documented yet. <laughs> it's legit. It's real. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the next obvious step was to see if it actually works. So Kelsey plugged it into one of the many NESs that she has sitting around her store. And yep, it booted up and it was really cool to see running. So that was, that was very awesome to see. So the question is, what am I going to do moving forward? Um, I really don't know. I've just been told try to get as much money as I can because the money is going to my brother and to help my family. Um, and not really much besides that. Um, it's been a process. It's been like a little ang like a little bit anxiety driven of like oh god what am i gonna do like and my friend's reddit post like blew up and he's kind of overwhelmed as well like we never thought it was going to be this big but it turns out it's a big deal when one of these resurfaces i was happy to step in and authenticate it i mean at the very least i can tell you if the board is legit and if the label looks legit and all of that and as far as i can tell in my professional opinion it's all good so Want to help the guy out and help him get as much money for it as he can. At this point, Tim is curious what Kelsey thinks it's worth because, as you can imagine, with something so rare, so sought after, and so expensive, it's kind of hard to gauge the value when you have so few previous sales. 
I mean, it's really hard to know how many potential buyers would be out there that would drop tens of thousands of dollars. So it's been brought to my attention that there is an offer on Nintendo Age for $20,000. It's an often open offer. And I'm also aware that there is a eBay listing for another one of the cartridge. I believe it's number 333. That is that was going for 35 thousand but that's it's their been, asking price that's their asking right. price and it's been dropped down the last few days to 32 thousand 33 thousand i think personally i i actually i, I heard about that twenty thousand oh. dollar offer um i would need to know the name of that person right. to assess if that's a mm -hmm. legitimate right. offer because <laughs> right. there's so a lot of people on nintendo age lots of people looking for this mm -hmm. and there's a lot of um you know, it's, it's a lot of money and there's several right. people looking for this kind of stuff. Um, I think that 20000 is not unreasonable. I do think that you would be hard pressed to get much more than that because they basically haven't historically sold for more than that. Now, you guys might have seen there was a, uh, a bunch of articles that came out for the infamous Mario one. It's the one... Uh, one of these that's got the torn label and it just says Mario mm. on it. I don't know if you've seen that. I have not. Um, that sold for sold for almost a hundred thousand dollars. It didn't. It was a total hoax bid, which is pretty obvious because it's mm. the worst condition one on the market, and that's like five times as much as any has ever sold for. Right. Um, so I think that you might see people trying to throw that number around, um, but I would not. It doesn't hold any water. I don't think that really much more than 20000 is realistic. Right. So that's where things kind of stand. Tim wants to sell the cartridge to help his brother out, who has sadly fallen on some hard times lately. And Kelsey has reached out to several of the big collectors that she knows in her network to potentially put their put their bid out there and uh, you know talk to Tim to see if maybe they could buy it. And right before making this video, I reached out to Tim for an update and he has several offers. One of them currently sitting at $23,000, but nothing yet is 100% finalized. It's a really cool find. If you're interested in following this or potentially reaching out to Tim, well, he has asked me to point people to the Reddit page that his friend has set up. That's where they're updating it. And I'll put a link down in the video description below. But of course, if there are any major updates, I would probably do another video for my channel as well. All right, guys, well, man, isn't that crazy? The type of stuff that they find in the Seattle area, so. So crazy, so awesome. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. And as always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care. Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. And today I am with Kelsey. How's it going? Pretty good, how about yourself? I'm doing well. So today we're gonna to be talking about tips and tricks for cleaning games and kind of processing them. Whenever you go to a garage sale or a thrift store or something like that, oftentimes you get games that don't work the first time you put them in or they're covered in stickers or other kind of gunk. So we're going to show you how to get rid of that. Awesome. Let's take a look. All right, so the reason why I wanted you to come on this video is because you, at your store, get a lot of these that come in, right? And yeah. They're often t bad condition. Yeah, in fact, most of the time when something comes in, the first thing I do is start a little bit of cleaning on it, even if it looks pretty good, just because I don't want to get any dirt on the inside of the system if I can avoid it. That makes sense. So before testing anything, I usually do a little bit of this, what is what I'm about to show you. So Q-tips are gonna be the most important tool here, and they're super cheap. Um, some people use, for the cleaning, they use things like Windex or Brasso. The safest option is isopropyl alcohol, and as close to 100% as you can get, because it can be cut with other things. Usually it's just water, but even still, water's not good on metal. Right. So you wanna get as close to 100% as possible, uh, at least above 90%. Um, so all you're gonna do is just dip the Q-tip in the isopropyl alcohol. You wanna get it pretty wet. You don't want it like soaking and dripping off the Q-tip, but you want it to be wet enough to actually have the alcohol on it. 
And then all you're gonna do is scrub the pins till you can kind of hear the scrubbing against it. So uh, you can already see stuff is coming off of these. Yeah. And then you just wanna make sure you use the dry side, make sure there's no liquid left on it. So doing that a couple times almost always will work for you. That That's gonna fix 95% of the games that don't work. That makes sense. And then also too, I wanna mention that uh, while Q-tips work and I mean, and I use those for years. I do want to mention a product here that I use. They're the one-up cards. And basically it's kind of the same thing, except for it's just kind of optimized for cartridges and really fast to use. So you don't need eight of them. You don't need eight of them. <laughs> you, yeah, and it's cool too, because it's fairly sturdy. It works with Atari, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis. Um, and you just squirt the alcohol on one side, scrub it, flip it around. The other side, it's perfect, so. And does the dirt kind of start to build up on there? How many cartridges do you think you can get out of one of these? I've cleaned a bunch, but it all depends on how dirty they are, obviously, because it, it is going to accumulate on that piece right there. So I've cleaned a bunch with mine, but he does sell replacement packs, and I found that they last a long time. So it's a product that I really like, so definitely check it out. Cool. I also like to open them up. If they have any more issues, um, you can sort of get at the board itself that way and look for any, you know, dings or breaks in the metal where metal's supposed to be touching metal, but it's not anymore. Um, and then just more general cleaning. A lot of that kind of stuff, most of the time just comes down to it being old and sitting out somewhere and getting some dirt on it. So if your game still isn't working, there are other ways. It doesn't mean it's gone forever, but they start to get a little bit more complicated and involve like heat guns and soldering. Uh, oftentimes the batteries are dry on cartridges. It's not a particularly difficult thing to do, but you do have to have a soldering iron. So it's a little beyond the scope of basics, beyond me. I, think. I don't have a soldering iron. <laughs> <laughs> I would bring it to you. Yeah, but there are, there are tons of game stores and local people, even just on like Craigslist or whatever, who are able to perform those sort of services. And I know John Riggs has a thing on his channel where yep. he resurrects cartridges from the dead much better than I can, so. Go John. There, there are other ways. So once you've gotten the cartridge working, now you can start to worry about how pretty it looks. So one of the things you're gonna run into is Sharpie on your cartridges. I know, somebody's name written yep, on it. Yep, which is, really annoying that you know mike or whoever tony has, yeah, yeah. They, they've all decided <laughs> to just put their name on this cartridge and now it's here forever but you can get rid of it and there's a couple different ways um the kind of least invasive way i always do is to uh run over it with dry erase marker leave it on for a little bit and then wipe it off dry erase marker of course is in no way permanent but it kind of loosens the the pigment in the sharpie and allows it to come off it's not going to work perfectly right away. You might have to do it a couple times, but it does work pretty easily and most people have a dry erase marker laying yeah. around somewhere. Huh. Um, the other thing I like to do is if it's not on an important part of the cartridge, like if it's not super close to the label, I'll take the cartridge completely apart and I will go take that part of the cartridge that the... Like, just the plastic. Just the plastic um, that the Sharpie is on and I'll take it to the sink and scrub it with a sponge and soap and water and that can work pretty well hmm. too. And then finally alcohol. Again, alcohol tends to just kind of... It makes everything better. <laughs> <laughs> alcohol fixes everything. You heard it here. <laughs> But that's one of the ways to get rid of the Sharpie. So it's annoying, but it can totally be fixed. Same with stickers, which seem to be on everything, especially yeah. on on boxes, not so much on like cartridges, although it does happen, but on boxes, they tend to have a lot of stickers from GameStop or wherever. The, usually what you can do, super easy, just Google on. Yep, yep, I use this, this a lot. This is such a great thing. Now, on boxes, I typically recommend you put some sort of paper, or cardstock, plastic material under it. You kind of slip it under the cover here so that uh, the Goo Gone won't slip onto the artwork itself. Or better yet, you can just remove the artwork yeah. from it and uh, and put it back in when you're all done. If you leave the Goo Gone on for five to 20 minutes, depending on how difficult the sticker is. Because, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but Goo Gone seems to kind of melt or break down the, the glue in there. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So um, it's a really weird slimy feeling, but it totally works. And it smells great. 
<laughs> smells like fake oranges and citrus and I don't even know. So, some sort of like tropical drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the best way to get rid of stickers. I also usually have some sort of like little razor blade that will kind of help. I need to get one. I'm get always it. using my fingernail and I don't have fingernails. Yeah, and it's, yeah I don't uh. either. So it, it's tough. And I, you want to get one that's like pretty sharp and you want to make sure that you are pretty accurate with it, not like stabbing your right. game, because you can totally put a rip in the plastic there. I also think that, that you're highlighting something here, and that's patience, is that a lot of this stuff really just takes patience. You have to kind of take your time, little small moves, and you know? Especially if there's a sticker on the label, you need to be so patient with that. Yes. It might not work without a heat gun, right. but sometimes it can if you just are really patient about the goo gun, if you feel it, giving you any resistance, you need to stop, add more goo gun, and wait longer. Almost every time I've ever accidentally ruined a label on a cartridge is simply because I was impatient. Because it was coming off, but I just, for whatever reason, you know, it's like, come on. And it's frustrating. Sometimes it a single game can be, you know, you gotta wait two hours total to get the whole thing I know. clean. So, <laughs> it can be frustrating. All right, so we talked about cartridges, but I'm kind of curious, what do you do when someone brings in a disc-based game and there's some there's some problems? So there's a couple different things that can go wrong with a disc and you've probably encountered all of them at this point. The worst one, or one of the worst ones, is the circle scratch that happens around the rings of, of the discs. So ah, it's the kind Xbox of, 360. Yeah, yeah, it happens <laughs> a lot on 360 games because for that original model, if you moved the Xbox while it was on and had a disc in there, it would just, yeah, it would just scratch a big old circle in your in your disc and it will never work again. Ouch. So the extremely frustrating thing about that is no one's really found a great way to restore those yet. There's There tends to just not really be a fix for it. I never advocate for throwing things away. I'm gonna wait for a day where someone figures it out, but I, <laughs> but you may be a little out of luck on that one. Um, there are lots of scratches that can be fixed though. So right. any scratches on the disc itself, I shouldn't say any, but most scratches on the disc itself, as long as it's not super deep and it's on you know the actual reflective side of the disc, can be fixed in a variety of ways. Now, you guys have probably heard of like- Toothpaste. The toothpaste, <laughs> toothpaste method or a banana peel or peanut butter, I've heard all kinds of things. My favorite is the deodorant. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it's all the same principle. All that is really is they're just kind of filling in just a little bit uh, where the scratches are so that the disc reader isn't kind of, you know, doing this thing the whole time. Yeah. You can it, read it a little bit more smoothly. And it's weird because when you're looking online and you also read comments, it seems about 50, 50% 50 of the time that that works. Maybe it's a little bit more, but that's not a, a foolproof way to, to, no, to fix no, it. No, no, it's just one way of many that you can try. Yeah, and it's cheap, so you can give it a shot. Right, but... you have one of those things in your house, I would assume. So. Yeah, exactly. But what you really should do is take it someplace to a professional to be resurfaced. Don't buy CD doctors and... These little, the, like, $15, $30 hand-cranking polisher those things. Those do not work. <laughs> They, I mean, they, they can, obviously they wouldn't sell them if it never worked, but they make your disc worse overall. You know, it's, it, they take off such a layer of, such a significant layer of the CD that you can't really afford to get any scratches on it ever again. Hmm. So professional machines, and I mean like really nice ones, thousands of dollars, can actually make your discs look pretty new. They can take off such a small amount and spread, um, I forget what the kind of fluid they use for it to that takes the place of toothpaste basically okay. in this situation huh. um but it can really fix it and yeah. you made an awesome point of a place to find them if you don't have a retro store yeah you. not everyone has a retro store but or a cd store or a cd store most people have a library and libraries deal with this all the time because they are lending out music cds dvd movies and they often have resurfacing machines there and they make them available to the public that's which is, awesome which is awesome so i learned this today yeah so <laughs> if you have a library maybe they'll do it for free or for a couple bucks it's pretty cool yeah the typical price tends to be about two or three bucks yeah a disc i found so it's not the cheapest thing ever but if you've got a more expensive game it's definitely worth it now 
Unfortunately, the way CDs work is the data is stored really close to the top of the disc here. So if you've got a game that has got a bunch of scratches on the top of the disc, that data in that area is lost. So yep. it may work a little bit, it may not work. It, it really varies from game to game and where the scratch is and... Um, and how deep it goes. Yeah, but yeah. it's, it's going to be pretty much on a case-by-case -case basis. So there's no resurfacing for the tops of... It's true. CDs, that, unfortunately. That data is usually gone at that point, yeah. so just kind so of be aware. Try to be, yeah, <laughs> protect the tops of your of your games. Now, the final thing that is a problem, this is the biggest problem because this is happening to all games and we can't stop it. It's called disc rot. I get asked about this a lot because I do have so many disc-based games and you deal with it in the store as well. Especially PC stuff. Yeah, and again, disc rot is this really interesting phenomenon that we never expected to deal with. When we were in the 90s, we were sold, or the late 80s, we were sold the idea that CDs were gonna last forever. That turns out to not be the case. Some of them may last a long time, but uh, a lot of these are breaking down. The, the dies in there are starting to come apart and there's not much you can really do about it. I mean, no. it's not necessarily anything you did either. No, it's um, it tends to be worse in really kind of warm, humid places like Florida, but it it's gonna happen eventually to everything. Like, you know, 200 years from now, they're all gonna have disc rot. And the way you can tell is you can hold a CD kind of up to the light, and if you see some little pinpoints of light pointing through at you, the data that was on that little pinpoint is gone. Yeah. It is rotted away. It shows up in a couple different ways. Right. I've also seen it just kind of make your disc look sort of brown and dirty. Yeah, or cloudy looking almost. Yeah. yeah, but the most common way is, at least in my experience, has been that kind of pinpoint if you hold it up to the light. And it happens a lot to uh, Sega Saturn and Sega CD oh. games <laughs> and Dreamcast. It's all the kind of light colored discs like that. Huh. It's probably going to happen at some point to all the PS2 and PS1 games, but it's happening to a lot of the Sega stuff. Yeah, so, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, it's a phenomenon that a lot of people are paying attention to. I say don't necessarily worry about it because there's really nothing you can do about it. I mean, keep your games in as safe areas as possible, but uh, it's just part of collecting at this point. So. Have a dehumidifier if you're really serious about it, but again, it's Everything has a half-life, right? Yeah, I mean, it's true. These just have a noticeable one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so that's a quick look at some of the ways you might clean your cartridges and your CDs, but there's a bunch of resources out there. Yeah, there's that'll cover probably 90% of the things that you'll run into, and occasionally there might be one or two things that are a little more complex. There are ways to deal with it, but they kind of go beyond the scope of this basic video. Right. So there's a big community out there of people who can help you, people in the retro game world. If you search, you know, your area, retro gamers, there will probably be some Facebook groups and that sort of thing that pop up. Plenty of people who are happy to help you out and answer questions. Yeah, it's true. So for instance, I collect PSP games and UMDs are so unique. And so sometimes I might get one that's damaged or whatever. So it's nice having the PSP slash Vita group there to to help me fix those. You know, very specialized, but it's nice it's there. Yeah, you can go to, you know, if it's specifically a Game Boy problem to a Game Boy collector's yeah. group, that sort of thing. Neo Geo so. Pocket Color. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so where can people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter at Kelsey Lewin. I also have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Kelsey Lewin. And I've got a podcast at Game Blitz Show. So busy. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing and take care. Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Kelsey. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me. Are you ready to play a weird Japanese game? Are you kidding me? Who are you asking? <laughs> I was born ready. I know, and this is such a weird game. Tell me about it. So this is ZXED, Legend of Plasmalite, or Plasmatolite. Yeah, I always yeah. forget the T in there because it doesn't really make much sense in English. But, but it's there. Whatever. This is a mech fighting game, but it's not just any mech fighting game because it comes in this giant box because you're required to use these mechs right here, these buildable figures. So you might be wondering why this looks like just kind of an abomination of pieces. Well, it's because you can change them out. You can change out the arms, you can change out the legs, the heads. And uh, it's kind of cool. It's definitely weird. Definitely weird, and we're going to play it. So let's take a look. All 
All right, guys. Well, we thought that probably a let's play of this would be the best way to do it, don't you think? I think so. It's just kind of a weird game. I've got yeah. the whole manual here. Uh, we have our mechs already pre-built here, although um, they do come the same way, you know, kind of those old models. It, yeah, it, it completely, off. when I used to build models as a kid, I was like, ooh, it looks just like that. Yeah, exactly like it. There's even painting instructions, too, and building instructions. It's really neat. It is. It's, it's, this is pretty cool. So, all right, should we get started here? Yeah, let's play. Now, first of all, kick your butt. Did, I, don't, I don't know if I was clear in the intro, but this is a, uh, this is, this is on a Japanese PS1. So it's, it's an import. It never came out in, in North America, I don't think so. No, it never came out. I mean, this is... This is something only Japan could do, really. It's right. it's model building and... Although, to be fair, I mean, it wouldn't have been cool if if the... Uh, what was, the, what was the, the the toys that came out, the toy game? Oh, my God. It would totally like blank. Skylanders or... Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was embarrassing. Okay. I don't know what... It says push start to exit. <laughs> oh, you know what this is? What? This is the warning where you have to plug them in. Oh, so we don't have them plugged in yet? I thought we did. Maybe we got to unplug them and replug them. There we go. Data check. There we go. Yeah, so one really weird or cool thing about this game is that you can't really emulate it because you have to have this. Because this has a custom-made, what would you call this, memory card adapter thing in the front of it? Yeah, I mean, it, it requires the use of these things. So yeah. here's mine up here and it, it's built exactly the way this model is but you'll see in a bit we can yeah. actually change out parts okay. don't forget you're gonna need to use circle to oh, go through this because this is a japanese right. one so it's circle and square thank you although even though that's in english right there but you know yeah they kind of pick and choose don't they a little bit yeah so you can change like the colors on these things the color schemes and this is in the manual too kind of like the well, different color it. schemes yeah exactly right. it, it's a uh, so what they what they would expect you to paint it as. So I'm gonna go with all one color scheme. This uh, oops. Did you okay. use pink? The, yeah, the the pink and the. Do you like pink? Yeah, I like pink. Okay. Do some do some colors here. But that yeah, you can cool. you can totally just like change it around. Well, I think the, the way they designed this was yeah that. You, you and your buddies would go out and get these. And actually, so these are stickers or emblems. Um, the guy who I borrowed this from actually has all the stickers. And so he just didn't include it in the box. But yeah, it comes with a bunch of stickers too. What is my code name? Oh, uh, I always pick rock star names. Okay, I think I'm going to be butt. Oops, that's <laughs> bus. bus. All right, <laughs> sticking with it. That's bus. All right. Okay, then I can choose my pilot with all these great like 90s anime. And it has, it has little mini pilots. Yeah, that you can paint. It's yeah. like little miniatures. I know. There's, there's some trading cards in here too yeah. with the pilots. It's it so, is. I know. It's it's, it's like, so complete for something that never went anywhere. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm gonna be this lady. She's okay. cool. All right, she's gonna be butt. I'm gonna spell it right. Butt. This time. Butt. Okay. I don't think she's, Barbie. She's gonna right. be. She's gonna be butt piloting bus. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we're good now. This is a. Uh, sure. Yeah. Cool. So the the first part of this game, I guess, is kind of slow because you're just building your your thing. Okay, next, next, no. By the way, we have played this. It's just been a while. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. How do I go next? There you go. Oh, oh. there we go. Okay. Okay, data check. Man. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> it's thinking. It's thinking. Oh, he doesn't have pants on. Uh oh. Uh oh. Where's pants? Yeah. So and see, his arm. see the pants are actually. You'll see it snap on. In there we go. Yep, oh, and he's got both arms. Okay, yes. cool. Okay. Uh, okay, cool. Gun level one. Sure, that sounds great. Uh, pilot code name. Uh, well, um, you gotta. So, oh, well, ass will be the name of the pilot. But what will, what will be? No, the, this is the name of the mech. This is the name of the mech. We'll mech. do uh, anus. Okay. <laughs> We're very mature. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And pilot, let's see here. Oh, here we go. Look at that dude. That, yeah, that, that guy okay. looks. Like and he knows his what name is—it's got to be douche. Douche. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone named Gary in the original. I guess you didn't play Pokemon, but everyone, everyone named a douche or douchebag. That or guy douche. looks like a douche. He does look like a douche. All right. All right. Next, go to battle. Right. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. All set. Oh, wait, wait. Is wait. that me? All set. All set. We're good. Okay. 
So these are different areas and you there's like different stages in each area. So let's, I don't know, let's just go to some random one here because I don't actually, I don't actually know. And as far as we can tell, the, the, the fighting in this is fairly basic. Oh, it's super basic. I mean, which is kind of a disappointment for such a game but for a game that has so much going on the outside, the the game itself is just kind of button mashing, really. Yeah, I mean, there's like there's like a punch and a kick, and like there's I can't find any combos. Maybe right. I'm just doing it wrong, but there's nothing in the manual that I saw. Now, now, however, what happens though is that oh, that's right. Yeah, you can you can how, just how kind you, of endlessly fire. Wait, wait, from, how do you how do you do that one? Uh, that's uh, L one. L one. Wait, I don't have. You have to go far enough away. Oh, to, oh, you're right, right, right. Okay. You can't shoot if you're close. Oh, oh. Okay, there we go. But I... <laughs> this is such... This is just so bad. I know. I mean, and we're so not good at fighting so games. Awesome. Yeah, so, like, that's part of it, too. But, like, you know, nothing really... You don't really do much here. However, what happens, though, is that, that your your uh, your limbs and stuff are taking damage. Yeah, and, and you'll see that in a sec here. Yeah, so, so notice that the counter at the top is, is counting down. So it's fairly short matches. Oh, see my pants? Your, oh yeah, yeah. Your pants are uh, on fire. <laughs> They're probably not really pants, but you know, my pants are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> They're breaking down. Yeah, you oh. haven't really broken anything down on me yet. You're not don't, very, don't, not very you don't good have to at this brag. button Please don't brag. Do, no. <laughs> <laughs> Parts change. Parts change. All right. So, and this happens. This is kind of annoying. It is. This, this happens in the middle of the fight, and you just go to this loading. You know, it's the PS One. So it goes to a loading screen. Right. 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 And then it's gonna ask you to change out some parts that are getting kind of ruined. So you, I'm, I'm actually fine. Okay, so so describe. So those are her hit points based yeah. on her different parts. So you haven't really done much to me, but I'm gonna. I'm so gonna notice that her arm anyways. came off. It says zero hit points. And now I'm you're gonna, gonna replace it with a different arm. Which you don't need that. to do because you're kicking my butt anyway. No, I really don't. No, no, thanks. Um, thanks but yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna put two different arms on here. Okay. So now I'm gonna have something a little different. I don't really like my tank body, but that's okay. Huh. So, kind of cool, right? That is pretty cool. Actually, I know because he has a shield too. All right, so I'm good. All right. Okay. So your turn. I'm, you are I'm, I'm, destroyed. I'm destroyed. So I'm gonna see. I, we haven't tried this before. I'm gonna just swap the whole thing. Let's see oh, what well, let you do that. I have no idea. Okay. So. I think it might be like no. Oh. How do we get this open here? <laughs> <laughs> Can you? Can you do this? How does this thing open? I'm not sure. Why don't you uh, put the arms on this guy and do, All right. do that instead? Now, the other thing we learned last time we played this game, we won't show you just because it's kind of annoying, but if you make like a save, like I saved my whole profile loadout, if you then try to load it, but you don't have the mech built exactly the way you had saved it last time, oh, it won't let you. that's right. It'll be like, I that. hey, build it right, you that's idiot. Right. Oh, so, what is it saying there? I, I don't read Japanese, but I'm guessing it's saying that you can't do what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be my guess. It right, probably wants here. you to start with the same okay. kind of mech I was body. hoping to cheat, to be honest, but okay, maybe it won't let me do that. Yeah, but you can change out the arms and stuff and yeah. everything that's... Data check. Yeah. See, that's in English. I can read that. I know. Okay, so we're back. Oh. So you're going to want to All right, so my right arm is completely arms. toast. Here's some arms for you. Thank you. You need You want to put the spider legs on? Yeah, let's do that. Oops. There we go. Uh, but this this is the part of the game that is kind of cool. It, well, it's what makes it weird, right? Yeah, that's and true. And what makes it interesting is that this game can like immediately recognize when you've put a new part There we on. go. Yeah. So, so now you're a spider. So there we are, spider. <laughs> uh, I am probably going to replace that yeah, arm because yeah, it's should. hosed. And I need okay. So base okay. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. There cool. We go. Oh. 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 Where'd your body go? You know, this actually we weren't having this many issues with it last time we played. There we go. Okay. Oh. Up. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Nobody breathe. <laughs> What's happening? What is happening? There we go. This okay. is getting very confused. Oh wait, wait. Come on. <laughs> Man, maybe you should just put these legs on. Yeah, maybe the spider legs. Maybe it just needs to be cleaned or something. Have you been? Probably. Have you been handling these too much? I I I have. I've been playing with them out in the backyard like I've been <laughs> ten. <laughs> okay, okay. There's my dude. All right. All right, you're going down. I don't think so. I. It's possible. Can I? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, don't Can you push. Push start. No, no. I just removed my laser thing. Oh no. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, okay. I, huh. I think it's just because your arms don't have that on. I don't know that you're actually setting anything. Wait, wait, wait. I want to do a... Oh, combo. Combo. Wait, wait. I don't know what that means. That's all... Yeah. I'm just going to push random buttons. Okay. Okay. Leg skill? You don't have any leg skills. I, clearly. I, <laughs> <laughs> I can barely stand. <laughs> okay. Can we go back to fight now? I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Energy charging. But you're right, though. So many load for, screens. For like, a, for like a minute long match, yeah. you have to do this and, every time. And this is going to happen again, by the way, before the end of the round. Like, it's part of the charm. It's, it's just, yeah, yeah, charm. We're going to call it that. Okay. We're going to call it that. So do you remember your combo that you said? Is it going to do anything? No, no. Okay. Clearly not. Hey. Oh, hey, hey, hey. What do you mean, hey? What okay, mean? I just want to shoot you. I told <sighs> you how to shoot. I'm not going to baby you. Okay, I have to take you down. I'm sorry. I don't think so. I want to hit you with an axe here. I can I can grab or I can hit you with an axe. I think hitting you with an axe I, is I, the better. I don't, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up and start shooting stuff at you. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm going to oh. do it too then. Oh, you and know what? die faster. Uh, damn it. <laughs> You have way more health than I do. Get good. <laughs> at this horrible game. <laughs> get good at this game that's very hard to get good at. I think, like, X is to block, maybe? Oh, yeah. you're right. Are you blocking? I, uh, not really. But now I am. Okay. No, that didn't really work that much. Oh. Here, hey. try again. Uh, no. I'm gonna keep shooting I don't know. I'm gonna it, keep... No, no, okay. no, I don't wanna die. Okay. I don't wanna die. Well, you're going to. No, I don't wanna... So. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't run away. Come no, on. Oh. <laughs> KO. <sighs> I really wish there were just more parts. I, like it's only four mechs. And yes. I, like my guess is that was probably the uh, the, well, the idea is like this was going to get so big and right. so popular that it can be like a whole line yeah. of and, stuff later. And but. to be fair, like I mean. I don't know if the game gets more complex or not because it, it, it who knows maybe it's it becomes a full-fledged fighting game but it's pretty basic right now so yeah, I, I think I it could have been cool yeah you know? there might be combos we just can't figure out I just right I wasn't able to figure them out I know we were using Google Translate last time too we were we were trying to oh man this is, we're too close I'm just you? hopping around you like a bunny yeah I here. know it's working pretty well for Thank you, you though. Thank you. Thank you. Trying to trying to stay alive this time. I don't I don't like this position. Can I change the camera? No. What no, is it? This no. is horrible. No, I'm sorry. We don't <laughs> we don't have the technology. <laughs> I think you're actually you're you're doing stuff this time. <laughs> you're getting better at this. I can't just whack you with my axe over well, and over again. You know Parts uh, change time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll do one more of these. <laughs> Now, can we reuse parts? Yeah. We, okay. Totally can. can. Okay. So, I'm going to so, see if the spider thing works for me. Yeah, try that. Oops. Oh, okay. i got to wait for you. Yeah, this one just doesn't sit in very well. I see. It has a thing on the bottom that if you push up, I don't know oh. what... Oh. Yeah. My, my fingers aren't skinny enough for that. Okay. Is it going to stay? Maybe. If I set it down. Oh, gently. see, it's working better for you. Okay. You just lost your right arm. Well, I'm gonna lose them both. Okay. Let's put on. Do you want the one of the greenies? Let's get one of the green arms. Okay. And then, but like at this point, I have to start taking things from you, or I have to just. Put can it... you put the feet? No, I can't put the feet. Try on it. There. I'll try it. What if it's it like works? A... It's just gonna be. Like... No, it doesn't even fit. Oh wait, it does. Wait. Wait. What, what happened there? I don't know. What does it think I put on? Oh, maybe, maybe Greeny's arms. I think that's what the... Oh, interesting. Oh. Yeah. Is that, is that it what that is? Yeah, it thinks it's, it's this arm. Huh. So there must be like a digital signature in... Yeah. Okay, so it's just... <laughs> I, well, so, I so like show it. everyone yeah. like, like what, what your this mech is, looks this like. This is the abomination I'm going with right now. This is new information. <laughs> so I guess you can put legs on every arm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, All right. Man. That's great. Okay, cool. I'm going with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we need we need higher laser levels. Uh, dude, look at the, I'm god. All right. You're messed up. I know. Dude. You should put the tank on the side. I think it just I don't no, know it just fall work. over. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. There we go. More legs. All right. <laughs> are these, oh, these are. I think you're going to have to use the tank body though. Yeah, because my m lower half's Unless dead. Unless you're going to make me take off my sweet side legs <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> Looks great. It does. And uh, it's the spider on the bottom, so he's got like. He's, he's got all got sorts like of weird going on, man. That is, that's almost that's disturbing. I wish I could put other stuff. See, this is where I think maybe the game gets a little more complex. Probably. We just don't know how I, to do I, it. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. I don't know. Skill. I want more skill. Can't I mean, help you there. <laughs> clearly, I need more skill in my life. See, it's saying something there. Okay, so just press square three times next time and see if that does anything. Huh. All right. I don't think it will, but... Probably not. I don't... Like, it's saying the same thing over and over again, so I don't know that it's actually, like, doing anything. Hmm. Who knows? Who knows? But it's definitely... I don't a, know anything about this game. It's a weird <laughs> fighting game. It's super weird. <laughs> I just love that, yeah, it, it only recognizes that, hey, this is a green guy part. It yeah. It doesn't necessarily care that a... Oh, okay, I can't fly in this one. I'm just hitting you with a club. I know. I'm gonna try pushing all sorts of weird stuff. Okay, do square three times. I wanna see if that does okay. anything. Did that? I don't know. I can't tell. Wait, wait. Here, I'll, that, let, let me back up. Oops, oops, oops. I'm sorry. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> all right, three times. Ah, uh, you stood like a little bit of a charge yeah, there. Yeah, is that. Do I do that too? Hold Probably on. not. Yeah, I think you are doing something a little different, maybe. Yeah, it's hard to hard to say. This game doesn't really no. look nice enough for me to <laughs> tell. But I mean, I the concept behind this is just so cool. Yeah, it is really cool. Oops. I mean, oops. Well, oops, you shot me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I guess you're doing a lot better this time. Thank you. That's because I was like embarrassed the first time. Like you destroyed me. I don't really. Did it you, get darker? Oh, parts change time. Already. Yeah, I can't tell if it's a. Uh, Let's just let's just keep going. Yeah, let's just do it. Yeah, sudden death. Yeah, we're both really messed up now. It's dark, isn't it? It is. It is. What happened? Like the I don't know. Or we're losing power. Or, or it's just like turning into nighttime in the game. I don't know if they like try to track that or not. Oh, you know what? I'm dying here. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Ooh. This. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey. Ooh. I hopped. Oh. And you're dead. Alright, good game. Good game. <laughs> Alright, guys, well, that is. Uh, ZXED Legend of Plasma Tlite. You have to do the T. Plasma Tlite. Plasma Tlite. Plasma That uh, would be how you would say it in Japanese. That right? sounds very official. Yeah. It sounds a little better when you don't have to do the T. <laughs> it's not, not a sound here. <laughs> Very true. All right. Well, uh, where can people find you on the web? Oh, you can find me uh, on Twitter at Kelsey Lewin, on my YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash Kelsey Lewin. I have a podcast, uh, Game Blitz Show, which is on YouTube and Libsyn and iTunes and all that fun stuff. Yes. And I just started a Twitch stream as well, twitch.tv slash We could have been doing this live. We could have been doing this yeah. live. I don't know how fun... Like I'm already bored. Yeah, so. I know. <laughs> but we need but more. This mechs. is awesome. This yeah, is awesome. I I, know. That's really all this game needs to be like significantly yeah. more interesting. I mean, the first time we played this, we actually did play for a good twenty we, or thirty we did. minutes. It's just after that, it's like. You know what would be awesome though is if a racing game. So basically, like cars Ooh, with different tires, different. scoops, all that stuff. That would be cool. That would be really cool. I mean, and you yeah. do that in the games themselves, yeah. but with like a buildable one. Can you imagine? Who would that need, be for? Need for Speed. But no, no. What what consumer is that for, though? Me. Okay, just you. <laughs> I'd be buying those little. I'd be buying. I would, I would be buying like Ferraris, Lamborghinis. Yeah, I would do it. Okay. Yeah, more than Max, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, they're cool though. <laughs> they are cool. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and take care. I want to give a huge shout out to Amaru, who is one of my Patreons, who contacted me through the website and said. Dude, I've got this really weird Japanese fighting game and I think you need to play it. And he was absolutely right. So he let me borrow it and uh, shoot a video on this because as you can imagine, it's fairly uncommon and uh, neither Kelsey or I had ever seen the entire package all together like this. So it was a great opportunity to do a really weird let's play and I 
Really appreciate it. All right, guys, thanks for watching.